بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Last time we met we came to the conclusion of chapter 90 سورة البلد where Allah عز وجل has told us about the great obstacle, the great hurdle, the steep path that no one can pass it unless he does righteous deeds, such as freeing the slaves, feeding the people in times of hunger and famine, being kind to the orphans who are related to you, kind and generous and to give those who are broke and have nothing in their hands at all and that you believe in Allah Azza wa you must believe and you must advise one another to be patient and to be compassionate so believing in Allah Azza wa Jal is a must for you to pass this steep path and to overcome that hurdle, an obstacle, and to advise one another to be patient is a must. And patience is divided into three types. Patience on doing what Allah commanded you to do. Allah commanded me to pray Fajr, to go to the masjid, to leave my bed. It's cold outside. This needs patience. So this type of patience on executing what Allah Azza wa has ordered you to do is required. Patience from not pursuing your desires and lusts that anger Allah Azza wa Allah tells you not to fornicate. So you have to restrain yourself. You have to prevent yourself from pursuing what Allah has made forbidden for you. And finally, the third type of patience is the patience that deals with tolerance and accepting Allah's calamities. This is something you have nothing to do with. There's no hand in it for you. So if you lose your money, if Allah tests you with an illness, we have to advise one another that we should be tolerant and patient. As for compassion, we should always remind ourselves and those around us how to love our parents, our siblings, our children, our spouses, how to love those who are related to us and how to be kind to them. And if we succeed in doing this, we will be among the people of the right, the people who would be given their record books in the right hand and they will enter paradise. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا هُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ And in contrast to that, those who disbelieved in our ayat, in our proofs, in our verses, they are those on the left hand. They are those with the bad omen. They are the people of hell because they will be given their books in their left hand and they would have their hands twisted to their backs. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Alayhim narum muqsadah The fire will be shut over them. They will see no passage. They will have no roof to look to the skies from. There will be no windows, no doors, no openings. It would be locked firmly on them and they would be tortured and punished and they will find the torment that Allah has promised them Azza wa Jal. They will have no escape, none whatsoever. 
because of what they had done. May Allah Azza wa Jal make me and you among those who believe and who advise one another of patience and perseverance and among those who advise one another with compassion. What we can learn from these ayahs is that Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us as a disbeliever, you boast about the money you gained and the money you had spent. You should not because the money is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And you should not have spent it in what angers Allah or in what fights and combats with Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us that there's a big hurdle and an obstacle that is hellfire and you will never be able to pass it. You will never be able to succeed in skipping it unless you do the things that were mentioned. And finally, Allah Azza wa Jal is scolding the disbelievers and he's giving them a preview of what awaits them on the day of judgment only if they can understand and believe. Moving on to the following surah, and that is Surah to Shams, the surah that deals with the sun. And why did they call it Surah to Shams? Because Allah swore in the very beginning by a Shams. And I'd like you to count with me, because Allah Azza wa Jal has never sworn with so many things before, which means that what Allah has sworn over is really important. Allah says, وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا Allah swears by the sun and its brightness. وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا And by the moon as it follows it. That means it comes after the sun. And as the sun is indication for the daytime, the moon is an indication for nighttime. And we spoke before about the importance of the sun and how with the grace of Allah, it is a source of life. Without its heat, we could not survive. Without its light, we could not go about. So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the sun and the moon. وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا And by the day as it shows up brightness. So Allah swore by the sun. Now he's swearing by the daytime, which is an indication of the sun. وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا And by the night as it conceals it. It conceals everything. Darkness conceals everything. And that is why if you're flying over a high altitude, the sun is visible for you. You can see it. But down on earth, the sun had already set. So you can see how darkness is covering the ground while you can see the sun in the sky. وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا Allah Azza wa swears by the heavens and him who built it. So this can be understood in two ways. Either Allah is swearing by the skies and by himself who had built it, or Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the skies and how it was built. So it can be both. وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا And by earth and him who spread it, or how it was spread. Now you can see that Allah is giving this introduction. So many things Allah is swearing by and the soul is anticipating, is waiting. What is it that Allah is swearing for? Because as we've said before in the Arabic language, when you want to magnify something and show its importance, you swear. And Quran was revealed in Arabic. So this form of addressing them by this, by that, by this, by that, it is for them an eye opener. So Allah is swearing by all of these things and says, And by the nafs, that is the soul, 
and him who perfected him in proportion. So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the human being, whether it's Adam, peace be upon him, or his descendants, or all of his offspring. Allah swears by the creation of this soul and how perfect it is and how Allah made it in the best of proportion. And again and again, look in the mirror. You will find Allah's perfection in your body, how he created you, how you move, sit, or lie down. All of these are beyond human calculation. This kind of perfection and excellent proportion is only from Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah is the one who created the individual, the soul, and he made it in perfect form and proportion. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Then he showed him what is wrong for him and what is right for him. Not only Allah Azza wa Jal created us, he did not leave us to move astray or to go around without being directed. Allah Azza wa Jal did not leave us to our own whims and desires. Man does not know what is best for man. And that is why you have parliaments, you have people legislating to their people. And every few months or years, they change the constitution. No, we were wrong. No, it shouldn't have been this way. And they keep on changing and changing. But the law of Allah Azza wa Jal does not change. Because Allah, the creator of man, knows what is best for man. And that is why Allah is the one who guided the soul and he knows what is best for it. We have a short break, so stay tuned. And inshallah, we'll be right back. We are not addicted to da'wah. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do da'wah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. The most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawa Ilullah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawa Ilullah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawa result oriented in Dawa Ilallah next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of the soul and he perfected it and made it in the best of proportion. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And after he created it, he did not leave it astray. Then he showed him what is wrong for him and what is right. So Allah guided the humans. It's up to you. But you have to bear the consequences. You want not to drink, you want to stay sober, Alhamdulillah, this is good for you. And you will appreciate that when you see other drunkards around doing shameful things. Allah Azza wa Jal says that by all these things that I have swore by, and by the soul that I have shown the good and the evil, and I've guided, and I've given the choice, Allah says, this is the most important topic and issue that required Allah to swear all of this. He has succeeded. He has won who had purified himself. So all what we want, all what we seek is success. Yet success is relative. 
and you have to set your objectives to know whether this success is truly something that Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with or not. And in contrast, and indeed he fails who corrupts his own self. He has lost who corrupts his own self. And how would one corrupt his own self? By following his desires and lusts. You know this is bad for you, but you insist on smoking it. You know this is bad for you, but you insist on stealing it. And you know that it would bring you harm, but you cannot help it, you have to do it. So those who fail to purify themselves have lost. And this shows you that it is an important issue to take care of. Allah says, كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ بِطَغْوَاهَا Now if you fail to purify yourself, listen to what happened to the nations before you. كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ بِطَغْوَاهَا Thamud denied through their transgression. What prevented them from believing? It's their transgression. They would not accept what Prophet Saleh had brought them. And we spoke about them and said that they are between Medina and Syria to the north of Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ told us not to enter their homes or their villages without being fearful and while in the state of crying and weeping. Allah Azza wa told us about their magnificence in building the structures and how good life was to them. Allah says, will you be left secure in that which you have here? In gardens and springs and green crops and date palms with soft spathes and you carve houses out of mountains with great skill? Their messenger is telling them, do you think that this is all going to last? Allah Azza wa sent to them Salih, peace be upon him, and they rejected him. And they demanded a miracle. So Allah got to them a huge, great camel, a she-camel, from the rocks. It came out without a father and without a mother. And they did not accept this miracle. Salih told them, she drinks from the well alone for a whole day. And the following day, you can drink from the well which she would give you milk that would be sufficient for the whole village. They belied him and they slaughtered that she-camel and Allah Azza wa Jal sent over them three punishments. He sent a sayha the awful cry, and a rajfa the quick, and the thunderbolt, a saiqa Three punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal that completely destroyed them. كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ بِطَغْوَاهَا Because of their transgression, they belied. And what is their transgression? إِذِنْ بَعَثَ أَشْقَاهَا They sent the most wicked person of them to slaughter that camel. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ وَسُقْيَاهَا The Messenger of Allah, Prophet Saleh, peace be upon him, warned them and told them that this is the she-camel of Allah that he brought to you. You should not interfere with it. And you should not definitely interfere with the day allocated for its drinking. Leave it. Don't come to it. فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَعَقَرُوهَا They belied him. They rejected what he had said to them. They denied him. And they slaughtered the camel. And as a consequence, فَدَمْدَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّهُمْ بِذَنْبِهِمْ فَسَوَّاهَا So their Lord destroyed them because of their sin and made them equal destruction. So Allah Azza wa Jal gave them this punishment, this awful torment in this life because of their denial, because of their rejection, because of them lying and belying the Prophet Salih, peace be upon him. Allah Azza wa Jal had made it flat on them. 
Allah Azza wa Jal has destroyed them because of their sin, because of killing the she camel that Allah brought to them as a miracle. And Allah Azza wa Jal made that punishment equal to all so no one escaped. And they were kept in their homes, shocked, killed, and left to rot like rotten corpses. وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقُبَاهَا And he, Allah the Almighty, fears not the consequence thereof. When you do something, you care what the consequences are. Not Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is the owner of everything you see and hear. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal annihilated them because of their disbelief. Despite all the warnings that they were given, despite all the miracles, and the greatest miracle is the she camel, that wonderful creature that Allah Azza wa Jal has given them, despite all of that, they insisted on transgressing, on slaughtering the she camel, on plotting to kill Salih and those with him, as mentioned in Surah An Naml. They say, kill him, and then go to his family and say that we don't know who killed him, so many of us. All of these to show how ungrateful they were and why Allah Azza wa Jal had punished them with such severe punishment. From these ayat, we learn that your salvation depends on how you purify your soul and heart. Your salvation depends on your good deeds and your pure conviction. It doesn't depend on individuals to be your saviors or to be your protectors. It's Allah Azza wa Jal that you must believe in and purify your heart for. We learn that the things that throw people in hell are their sins. And Allah Azza wa Jal is warning us not to transgress. Because transgression is always ending in hell. So always be fair, be just, and try to prevent yourself from self-destructing in this life and the hereafter. Also, we learn that Allah Azza wa Jal so many times repeat the stories of the previous nations so that the Prophet ﷺ would be entertained and he would know that what he's facing from hardship is the same thing that all messengers and prophets of Allah had faced before. And it's also an example to the people of Quraysh that even though you're strong and wealthy, look at the tribes before you and what had happened to them because of their disbelief. And finally, Allah Azza wa Jal is giving the warning to the people of Quraysh and Allah swore by all of these magnificent things to tell them that your salvation depends on accepting Islam, on cleansing your heart. No hatred, no grudges, no enmity. Fix it so that it gives you a better body. The Prophet said, والسلام, Allah does not look at how you are built or at your wealth, your money, but looks at your hearts and your actions. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal looks at. This is how Allah Azza wa Jal would hold you accountable to what is in your heart and the actions you do. Whether you're white or black, whether you're rich or poor, this does not matter to Allah Azza wa Jal. It is your heart that you should work hard for to cleanse and purify and it is your deeds that you must perfect for the sake of Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. This is all the time we have until we meet next time fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>